This video is proudly sponsored by Nextbase dash cams. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be comparing the iconic BMW 1M to the very recent G87 M2. They both have very similar recipes, and in fact, they are both baby M cars from their period. They're both rear wheel drive, they both have three litre inline six twin turbocharged engines, and they both got six speed manual gearboxes. In fact, the 1M was only available as a six speed manual, whereas the G87, well, we know that that is available as an auto or with a manual box. And this particular press car, if you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that it's a manual. The 1M was a bit of a parts bin special of its time, almost a skunk works, if you like. It was produced and sold mostly in 2011, and BMW M had planned to sell around 3,000 units, but actually they ended up selling just over 6,300, and 450 of those were right-hand examples that came to the UK. And in fact, the UK cars have got a nice little plaque on the ashtray cover that says one of 450. They were available in Valencia orange, sapphire black, or like this press car example, alpine white. There was also four very special customer cars produced in individual colors. And we actually saw a Java green one the other day, but the chance of seeing one of those on the road are very, very slim. If you're a subscriber to the channel, then you're probably already familiar with the G87. I've filmed plenty with it, including a pre-production video and the official launch earlier this year in Arizona. Essentially, it has grown width-wise, length-wise, and weight-wise, especially compared to the 1M or the previous F87 generation. It's roughly four inches wider than the 1M and eight inches longer. It also weighs about 200 kilos more. But actually, when you look at both of the cars side by side, well, the new M2 absolutely dwarfs the 1M. So when you consider 200 kilos, well, that's less than 10% weight gain. So although it's no lightweight, the 1M wasn't particularly light at 1,495 kilos either. Before we open their bonnets and look at their engines and talk a little bit about their specs, I think we should touch upon the styling. There is no denying that the 1M is an absolute beauty, at least in my eyes. The new M2, well, it has real controversial looks. It's a big talking point of the internet and I don't think it has any pretty angles, but they are growing on me, and when you see one on the road, well, they've got a lot of presence. Underneath the 1M's bonnet, we find the N54. It's a three litre inline six twin turbo, a very familiar recipe even for today's modern M engines, except back in the day, hardcore M enthusiasts claimed that the 1M wasn't a full fat M car because it didn't have an S designated engine. Although, as we'll find out, this little N54 is an absolute peach of an engine. It produces 340 horsepower and 450 new meters of torque, although there is an overboost function that's available between five and seven seconds that gives you 500 new meters of torque. And that's a lot of torque even by today's standards. BMW claimed that this would do the 0-60 sprint in just 4.8 seconds. Remember, it's a manual and rear wheel drive, and that it will go on to a limited top speed of 155 miles an hour. Under the M2's bonnet, we have the S58, which is a three liter inline six twin turbo. Remember when I said that car had a familiar recipe? Well, that's what I was talking about. In this car, the S58 has been detuned compared to when it's in cars like the current M3 or M4, but it still produces 460 horsepower and 550 newton meters of torque. And that propels this car to a claimed 0 to 62 figure of 4.3 seconds. So it's about half a second quicker claimed to 60 or 62 miles an hour. 
And remember, it has exactly the same recipe in terms of a manual gearbox and it's rear wheel driven. Both cars are on Michelin tires. When the 1M was launched, I believe it was on Michelin Pilot Sport tires. The press car now has Pilot Super Sport tires and the M2 is on Pilot Sport 4S rubber. Big thanks to Nextbase for sponsoring this video and actually making this entire Nürburgring trip possible. As many of you might know, I've run Nextbase dash cams in my cars for about the past 10 years. Most recently, I've been running their flagship 622 in my M3 saloons, and that has now swapped into my M3 Touring. On this particular trip, well, Petrolped and I have been very, very lucky to trial their pre-production IQs. So make sure you keep an eye out on Nextbase's website for when they are releasing this. I'll put a link to all the relevant information below in the description and also on the pinned comment. But if you want to pick yourself up something like the wonderful 622 in the meantime, then make sure again you use that link because I absolutely love mine and I am looking forward to running a final version of the IQ when it's available. Once again, thanks to Nextbase for sponsoring this video. Let's go and jump in the 1M and take it out on the road. On the outside, I talked about the 1M being a bit of a parts bin special. And I don't mean to offend any 1Ms or 1M customers out there. But what I do mean is, well, this car kind of was never meant to exist. BMW M put it together in a rather rushed fashion compared to other M cars. I believe development, etc., was all within a year. And to do that, they had to steal a lot of parts from other existing M cars. And the 1M shares many components with the mighty E92, which is the V8 M3. It has its brakes, it has the whole entire rear suspension set up, it has a rear diff. It even shares things like these gorgeous M specific door mirrors. Interior wise, well, it does feel very stripped out and basic in here compared to, let's say, the M2 that we're going to jump in shortly. But is that a bad thing? Not at all. There's lovely buttons where I want there to be buttons. We've got these gorgeous analog M specific dials in front of me. Everything feels familiar and good. The driving position, I have to say, is probably a negative for this car for someone with my frame. I've got a very lanky and long torso. I feel like I'm sitting very high. We've got offset pedals, which is nothing new for M cars, old or new, and you soon get very used to them they're not ideal but yeah in terms of where I'm sitting I am sitting extremely high and I don't think I could wear a helmet in this car but that is not the be all and end all because I think if I had a 1M I wouldn't be taking it on track but aside from a slightly average driving position and maybe these seats that are definitely starting to feel a bit old-fashioned compared to modern M seats they're comfortable enough they don't really support you that well the rest of the package it's just brilliant <laughs> absolutely brilliant and if you'd seen my review of this car that I shot a couple of years ago on Sebastian's car Sebastian's 1M you'll know how much I love the 1M First thing that really stands out is the steering. It's accurate, it's fast, but most importantly, and something we don't talk about in this day and age, is it has feel because it's a hydraulic steering rack. I feel everything that is going on underneath and beneath it and on the road. And that's a good thing because this car's relatively short wheelbase the fact it's rear wheel drive it's talky it's powerful it can be snappy so you need accurate you need fast steering to deal with the beast 
that is beneath. It's just brilliant. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Of course, having good steering is no good if it doesn't handle well, and thankfully, on the 1M, it handles exceptionally well. It's weird to get your head around when you first jump behind the wheel of this car because it does roll around a bit, it doesn't feel super stiff, which is a good thing because the suspension is really pliant, especially on the roads out here, even this fairly rough road, but it handles really really well i'm sure a lot of that is thanks to the slightly updated and more modern pilot super sport tires but a lot of it also is to do with the fact that they've keyed in everything the suspension is set up so so well it just feels great what isn't so great are the brakes they're okay but again by modern standards they're not brilliant because only 10 11 12 years ago bmw m didn't really give us the best brakes in the world it's only recently where they've started fitting really good stoppers so you have to be a bit patient with them and I'm sure on a track day or on a stretched out spirited drive they would overheat and start feeling gradually worse so that is something that does feel its age and that's common with any car that I've jumped in that is more than say 10 years old I think brakes, stopping power, has really come a long way. Next thing to talk about is that engine. Yeah, it's only an N54. It's not a full fat M engine. It doesn't have an S at the beginning of it. If you didn't know that, <laughs> and you drove this car you wouldn't care because it's just such a peach it really really is it seems to have power and torque everywhere it really rewards you up the top like an M engine should it sounds great yes it's a little bit quiet in this car especially when you consider this is way before mm, sound restrictions and OPF filters and all that sort of thing all those nonsense things we have to deal with today but it just sounds great and you put your foot down in any gear and I mean any gear so let's just roll along here we're going to use miles per hour even though we're in Germany we're at 30 miles an hour at 1400 rpm put my foot down okay now the turbos 40 50 60 and on it's just lovely it really rewards you the manual box I'm sure it's the same one that's in my F87. In fact, I'm sure it's relatively similar to the one that's in the M2 that we're going to jump in. But in this, it just feels so, so good. Really, really does. That's probably because this car's got 20,000 miles under its belt, maybe, but it feels fantastic. The pedals themselves, well, they're relatively easy to do heel and toe. <laughs> Even though my seating position is slightly compromised, I feel like I'm sitting a little bit close to the pedals. But if I sit further away, then I feel like I'm too far away from the wheel. So you've got to compromise on some things, but I'm sure someone that isn't as lanky as me is going to find a much more comfortable and better seating position. But yeah, in general, how does the one end make me feel? It makes me feel happy, it makes me feel good really does this is BMW M inside and out really really is it's just a sweet sweet little package it's addictive to drive it's addictive to walk up to as well in the morning because it just looks so good it's just such a nice nice thing brilliant brilliant car these were 40 grand when they were new way back in 2011 they're 40 grand used for about 10 years and the last couple of years they've started to creep up and I can totally understand why, especially when it's new replacement, the M2, well that starts at 65 grand. And yeah, that's only gonna depreciate, whereas these, well they're only gonna go up in price. So yeah, my verdict on this is big thumbs up, absolutely love it.
before we jump in the M2, I just want to test this car's acceleration figures out. Nothing too scientific. I'm going to stop along here on this straight and we're going to do one launch because I don't want to damage the clutch. It's an old car and I want to make it a real life acceleration test. So we'll come to a standstill here. I'll get my race box mini ready to go. Let's see what it can manage. A little bit of wheel spin, but not much. And there's 60. 4.61 seconds to 60 miles an hour. <laughs> the old girl is definitely not slow. Well, that's two tenths of a second quicker than BMW M claimed 12 years ago. So it hasn't lost any horses. <laughs> and it hooked up extremely well. I'm sure I could have got that launch a bit better, maybe a tenth or so, uh, but you can't sniff your nose at 4.61 seconds. Right, let's go and find that M2 and see what that's all about. Same piece of tarmac in the G87. I'll be lying if I didn't say I feel more at home in this car, it feels more familiar. This is my long term. I've had it about a month already, would you believe it? So I feel, yeah, very connected to it. First thing to talk about is the interior. I mean, it feels like we're four generations on in here. And I'm not saying that's a good thing. It just feels completely different buttons have gone, screens are absolutely everywhere. These seats, <laughs> I mean, they are the best in the business as far as I'm concerned. Yes, they're a pain quite literally in the ass getting in and out regularly if you're using this as your daily, then the regular M Sport seats will be better. But when you're in them, they're amazing. They look amazing, they feel amazing, they support you amazingly well. Then the driving position, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Doesn't matter what sort of shape or size you are, you will fit in one of these and you'll find a fantastic driving position. It's as good as anything Porsche has ever thrown out. We talked about the 1M being a parts bin car. To be fair, really, the F87 M2 and this latest G87 M2 is also kind of a part spin special if you think about it because most of the underpinnings in this car come from the current M3 and M4 so really that's no different and of course on the outside the exterior yeah the body panels etc are very different to the M3 and M4 and in fact many of them are unique on this car even compared to siblings like the M240 iX drive, which is a fantastic bit of kit and arguably a better daily than the M2 will ever be. I'm not having to heel and toe in this car because I have the auto blip turned on, but if I go down here to the setup menu, I can turn that off so I can heel and toe and you know what although once again the pedals and the offset aren't the best heel and towing in this car are very very easy especially if you've got the right shoes on which for once I have as we come out here put our foot down the traction this car finds is just unreal a lot of that has to do with the fact it has PS4S's on it and their 285 section on the rear. A lot of it has to do with diff development and stiffness of chassis. This car is just ridiculous. I mean, you think the 1M's quick down a road like this. The M2's on a completely different level and I'm sure that would be the case if you took them out on track. But one thing it really, really lacks is something I've talked about with all of the new M3, M4, now the M2, is 
lack of steering feel. That's one of the first things you notice as a positive in the 1M. It's one of the first things you notice as a negative in this G87. It's just a bit dead. There's not much going on under there. The front axle is unreal. The actual steering ratio and stuff is really nice. And in fact, probably nicer than the 1M in terms of it's not too fast. You don't feel like you need to make a million adjustments through a corner like you sometimes do in the 1M. But there's just nothing communicating to you as the driver through your hands. And that's a shame because this, after all, is meant to be a sports car. But thankfully, when you've got these seats, you don't have to depend on the steering feel too much because you can feel what the car is doing via your bottom. And I know that sounds bizarre, but you really can. It's like being in a go-kart. You really know what's going on through the seat of your pants. And it's a shame that you don't get that through the steering as well. But what I'm saying is this car isn't completely lacking in feel. There is some there, but it's coming via different avenues and not ones that you'd necessarily normally expect. But throwing it in here, it's just grip forever. And something else that it has that's really, really good is brakes. This thing stops. It really, really does. The brakes are unreal. And once again, people do go on about the rear calipers looking a little bit average. I mean, they're single piston calipers that actually originated from the F90 M5. They then found their way into the current M3 and M4 and surprise, surprise, they're now on the M2. But aside from the way they look and aside from the way they read on a spec sheet, they work exceptionally well and I'm not complaining about them because this car really stops well. It stops well on track and it stops well on the road. The engine, it's mighty. And I know they say it's a detuned version of the S58 but it certainly doesn't feel like it's lacking to me. It actually works really well with the manual gearbox. I'm sure the Auto is the better overall package, especially if you're using your G87 as a daily, but it pairs up very nicely. I'd say even more so than the F87 manual comp like my car. It just seems to all gel very well. This car feels like it has more torque down low than the M3 and the M4 do. Maybe they've mapped it slightly, so it's got less overall or maximum torque, but it has more torque down low. It's no secret that I do really like the G87. I liked it from the moment I tried that pre-production car around the Salzburg ring in Austria about 18 months ago. And I haven't really changed my mind. I still think it is brilliant. But it's not until you drive it back to back with something like the wonderful 1M where you really realize that it has lost a lot of its soul. A lot of that has to do with the lack of steering feel. But a lot of it has to do with the fact that this car has grown up so much. I mean, the original M2 F87 that came out in 2016, April the 16th was the UK launch date, I seem to remember, because that's when I picked my one up. That car was still alive. It was playful, it was loud, it was just a bit naughty. It wasn't perfect and it would bite you hard if you got it wrong. Whereas this, we get in here and it just has so much ability. And does that mean I'm complaining about a car that has too much ability? Well, maybe I am. Yes, it is a bit more playful than say the current M4, but it just has so much grip and so much ability that on the public road at least, it's nowhere near as playful as something like the 1M. And that for me in an M2 just means that it's lacking that little something because you just need to be doing really, really silly speeds in order for this car in the dry especially to come alive and I don't want that from my small little sports car 
even if it does cost 70 odd thousand pounds. Last thing to do is test out this car's claimed acceleration figures. We're on the same piece of tarmac that we tested the 1M about an hour ago in exactly the same conditions. Traction control, etc., is switched off. My race box mini is ready to go. <laughs> 4.07 seconds. <laughs> I thought I had overdone it with the revs, I really did, but that magic diff, even though the traction control was completely off, and it is off in these cars when it says DSC off, it found grip, that diff managed to do some magic and find grip and the tyres and fire us down the road in 4.07 seconds. So although it doesn't feel massively faster than the 1M, it is at least half a second quicker to 60, which is a lot of time. Um, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that it has a more trick diff, it has wider rear tires that are on more modern rubber. It's just a newer car, but neither are slow. And in fact, both cars feel like they have the perfect amount of power for the chassis and the car itself, if that makes sense. The 1M definitely doesn't need any more power or torque, as a road car at least, but if you start to play around with it, tweak it, put better suspension on it, etc., then maybe, yes, it could do with an extra 50 brake. I guess it's conclusion time. Now, <laughs> Both cars have their pros and cons, just like any twin tests I've done. If I had a collection of cars, or even if I had my current, let's say, M3 Touring, I think I would choose the 1M, because the 1M is a really special car. It's something that I would cherish, something that I would take out on the weekends, and something that I would look after in the winter. It would be an investment as well, it's a better looking machine. It's just such a lovely piece of kit. The GA7, yes, it's not the prettiest thing in the world and yes, it's heavier and yes, it doesn't have the feel that the 1M has, but as a package, it is a brilliant piece of kit. It is 65 plus thousand pounds. This particular press car is about 76 or 77. So silly money, but as a package or as a one car garage, well, this ticks an awful lot of boxes and it will do an awful lot of things. You've got four comfortable seats in here and a big boot. It will do 30 miles to the gallon on a long run and it's a modern car, so it has warranty. It's very unlikely touch wood to break down, etc. So yeah, as a one car garage, this is the better car as something you're gonna take on track and not modify too much, I would assume this would be the better machine. Yes, it might overheat reasonably quickly, just like the M3 and M4 do because it's so heavy, but its capabilities, it's unreal. It has that mighty front end as an M3 Touring goes past us that the M3 Touring has. Anyway, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Massive shout out and thanks once again to the sponsor, next base dash cams please remember to check out the link in the description and in the pin comment below i'll see you at another video very very soon cheers